And one person who I know is going to make a huge splash as the male flag bearer at the Paris Olympic opening ceremonies, none other than LeBron James. Now, obviously, LeBron James, I would say, without a doubt, he's probably... He's in the top five of the most well-known athletes in the world. I would say there's probably some soccer players, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, who probably very well-known around the world, uh, Leo Messi, very well-known. But LeBron James, as far as American athletes, probably the most well-known athlete in the entire world. Now, the fact that he was chosen to be the flag bearer, the male flag bearer at the Paris Olympic opening ceremonies, some would scratch their head just a little bit. Because as we know, there are some anti-American marks on LeBron James' record. This is, this is a fact. But I am here to let everybody know that we can let the past be in the past, right? You can, you can change your mind and there's nothing wrong with it. Just like, for example, JD Vance, the now VP, on Trump's ticket, at first didn't like Trump in his early political career before Trump took office. Now, look, he's running. He's Trump's running mate. So listen, we can let the past be the past if, and now here's the big if, if LeBron James can get on board, present at the Paris Olympic opening ceremonies, play his ass off for Team USA, bringing home the gold, and if he can get behind voting for President Trump. Now, there's a few reasons why I feel like now's the time to make that switch because we all know in the past we talk about anti-American sentiment and, you know, maybe his disdain for Trump in the past has been pretty clear. There's a lot of things that can change and maybe they have already started to change in his mind. But let's throw it back originally to 2017 when LeBron took a shot at Donald Trump for being a bum after he went after NBA and football players who knelt for the national anthem. Watch. We have someone as this is the most, this is the number one position in the world. Do you guys agree? Being the president of the United States is the most powerful position in the world. I, I don't know of another one. And if you can find one, let me know. It's the most powerful position in the world. And we are at a time where the most powerful position in the world has an opportunity to bring us closer together as a people and inspire the youth and put the youth at ease on saying that it is okay for me to walk down the street and not be judged because of the color of my skin or because of my race. Uh, absolutely. The most powerful position in the country. And LeBron James, you too, believe it or not, and I'm sure he does understand it, you're in a pretty powerful position yourself. You have a ton of influence as to what people think and what people do, especially the younger generations. And those are essentially going to be a big part of the voting base that are going to need to understand what's at threat. Democracy is at threat in this election. We definitely are understanding of that. LeBron, you should be understanding of that. And honestly, you know, we're asking you to get an entire generation, at least help them, at least help to onboard them onto the Republican Party because we understand what's at stake here. But if we're just talking about even more specific of a voter base, uh, we know that you deeply care about the black community and our country. And that is another reason why you should be voting for Trump. Because when we look at what Biden and Harris as a team have done for this country in the past nearly four years, it's not pretty. And I know you care about the younger generation. I know you care about the black community. And when you look at what's happened to these communities, among others, endless inflation, breaking our education system, it's nearly impossible now to achieve the American dream. Even young people want to be homeowners. It's not even a possibility anymore, right? There, there's no inventory. Those that are on the market completely out of the price bracket for one to be able to achieve as a first time home buyer. Uh, I mean, let's look at inflation over the course of Trump's presidency, shall we? Okay, so here we are, October 20th, 1.2%. November 20th, 1.3%. This was, of course, during a year under Trump's presidency. December 20th, 1.5%. January 21st, 1.4%. This was right heading into 
Biden's term. Okay, so here we have the months leading into it. 18 months later, once Biden has been in office for 18 months, inflation, we see it right here, still in the 1%, not even breaking 1.5%. Under Biden and Harris, 18 months later, 9.1%. Not to mention, if we are still focusing on the black community, President Trump made permanent a commitment, $255 million in annual funding for HBCUs by signing the Future Act. Meanwhile, we have our now Democratic nominee for this country speaking to a historically black college at at HBCU's basketball team like they were babies after they lost. This is not the type of leader we need. We need someone who can speak to people like they are mature adults and understands how important they actually are, not like this, thanks to Kamala Harris. You guys are so good. You played hard, you played to the very last second. You made all us bison so, so proud. You hustled out there, you are smart, you are disciplined, you put everything you had into the game. So you keep playing with chin up and shoulders back. Cause you showed the world who bison are. Kamala Harris is not somebody that should be the president of this country. She's someone that should be teaching a kindergarten class. Uh, This is just ridiculous. And LeBron, you need to understand this. Now, I understand that maybe on one hand, you would think to yourself, this is fantastic for our country. We have a black woman, the first black woman who could be the president of the United States. But listen, As a woman, I am deeply offended that this could be the first female president of the United States. I am all for a woman taking power, the right woman. But Kamala Harris is not it, just like Hillary Clinton also wasn't it. Also, I am deeply offended by the fact these are the only two women that we have had the potential to see as president of this country. They are not capable. And LeBron, you of all people, should understand that. Finally, LeBron, we understand the blood, sweat, and tears you have put into your career. You are the true definition of a fighter. You have single-handedly lifted up the NBA and put it on an international stage like it wasn't before. All right, you are worshipped all over the world for your athletic abilities. Somebody else who is really respected worldwide is President Trump. I mean, just yesterday, we played a clip of Trump joking about his conversation with Kim Jong-un and how how all he wants to do is collect nuclear weapons. And Trump was like, you know what? You need to relax. You need to chill. Why don't you come on over? We'll go to a Yankees game. I'll take you to the Michigan season opener. And Kim Jong-un, honestly, I would not be surprised if he took Trump up on that offer. President Putin also respects Trump. There there are world leaders that respect President Trump in a way that when they think about Biden, they laugh. When they think about Kamala Harris, they laugh. All right, what we need for this country to lead this country is somebody just like you, and that is a fighter. That's why Dana White opened for Trump at the RNC, naming Trump as one of the greatest fighters, or rather the greatest fighter he's ever met in his lifetime. Hulk Hogan, also a fighter, calling Trump and J.D. Vance the greatest tag team of all time. So LeBron, listen, I know you have your hands full right now. You've got the Paris Olympics coming up. All right, you have your son now in the NBA. You've got a lot on your plate. But please, if we could add one more, that would be to help take our country in the right direction. And that would be for you to make it public that you are now changing your mind, which is fine. We are all about learning in this country, evolving, developing, and in doing so, that you are now going to vote for Donald J. Trump in the 2024 presidential election. Let's bring in someone else now to add into the conversation. This is someone I look forward to seeing each and every week. You know him as Mike Gunzelman. I know him as the big gun. So let's 
Let's bring him on in. There he is. What's going on this morning, Guns? <laughs> hey, Charlie, you are fired up this morning. You are. Uh, I'm fired up. Yeah. How about that? You uh, you just put LeBron James to task right there. Let's go. But uh, <laughs> you know what? You're you are you're exactly right here. And you 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 know you single handedly broke it down on why LeBron you know first off should be honored to be able to represent the country, especially in uh, such a divisive, not only political domestic time right now but especially in the international front and when we go to the olympics you know you look at throughout the throughout the years all the different kind of monumental things that have happened there whether it's 1980s where it's the u.s versus russia and all that with the hockey and of course you believe in miracles and whatnot we need a miracle these days charlie and one way to do that would be to be able to bring this country together and you know when you look at <laughs> when you look at just the situation that we're in and what's frankly scary about it is, um, Charlie, is we don't really fully even grasp the situation that we're in right now. Uh, we still haven't seen Joe Biden in the last couple of days. Uh, the Democratic Party. Can you believe is, that? Yeah, the, yeah. Can you believe like, we have not seen? We haven't <laughs> seen a glimpse of him. Nothing. Where, are you, Where Joe? is he? Like this is Where so are you, weird. Joe? Like, like I mean, it, it reeks it reeks of something happening. Right. I mean, this it, it like obviously reeks of secrecy. Uh, okay. The fact that we haven't seen him when he's stepping down from, you know, running for for reelection. And then Kamala Harris also says, oh, we have a call with Joe Biden. Yeah. She was almost said recording. Yeah. Something's weird here. Something is weird here. And, and you know, we're not going to get the truth from the administration that it is time for someone like LeBron, uh, LeBron James to step up and, and be able to not, I wouldn't even say it's not take one for the team. He used to quote unquote, take one for the team. I about you take one for the country and just be like, Hey, I think we need some, uh, some unity right now. And, you know, sometimes you don't have to even fully love the person that you're voting for, but you'll like them more than the other person. If you want to call it lesser of two evils, if you want to call it, well, it's better than the alternative. I don't care what your reasoning for it is. Or how about this? How about you're carrying the flag of the United States of America on the Olympic stage? So, um, I, you know, you broke it down perfectly regarding LeBron James. However, I would say this. It's a lot of wistful thinking, my friend. Because <laughs> it is LeBron James. And I don't think we're going to get it from him. Well... You know, we can always cross our fingers and pray. You never know, though. Uh, hey. And that's probably what we need to do at this point in time. Although I, I do agree. feel very confident. I do feel very confident. Um, I w it was unclear what was going to happen as far as the Democratic nominee. I do feel like now this is the Republican Party's election to lose. Mm -hmm. uh, Kamala Harris, we all know, in Washington is even more disliked than Joe Biden. Uh, the Democratic Party dislikes Kamala Harris even more than Joe Biden. So hopefully the momentum on the Trump train can keep on trucking and we can take this straight into November and beyond and won't have so much to worry about. But I do really feel like it's Trump's election to lose at this point. So um, at least now we know. We don't have to wait. We don't have to see if there's going to be a Michelle Obama swooping and a Gavin Newsom swooping in. Uh, we know that it's Kamala Harris. And now we just wait for her to ruin her chances on her own, right? We wait for her to open her mouth in what's not a pre-scripted speech. We wait for her to do interviews. We wait for her to debate guns. And well, we can only imagine uh, the train wreck that's going to occur. And it's going to be one that I am going to be watching very closely with a smile on my face. How many times have we, it's going to be painful for the outkick viewer painful. out there. Kamala Harris is so cringe. How many stories have we done at outkick.com? <laughs> we're just like, really? Like she just reeks of phoniness and being a fraud and a fake. Like that tone that she uses and the fake smile. The rhyming. The <laughs> we did it, Joe. And then she blew it last night. When she, you don't just say the word recording out of nowhere unless it's a recording or something's going on, lady. So, like, uh, it is going to be, it, it it's going to be entertaining in the fact that God knows 
how much Trump is going to wipe the floor with her. <laughs> oh, my God. The debate should be something. The debate's going to be something. Uh, also, Vegas. I mean, a lot of people turn to Vegas to see what's up. And right now, the gambling markets are heavily favoring Trump, With even with Kamala taking over for Biden. I mean, this was from yesterday. Uh, who knows? The numbers could be even further increased in Trump's favor. Trump was coming in at 63 percent. Kamala, 32 percent. And then, of course, now Michelle Obama, she's a non-entity. But um, yeah, I mean, these numbers are not looking good for the Dems, but looking great for Trump. And that's really all that matters right now. So um, let's let's keep our eyes on Vegas and see what happens there. But Vegas usually is pretty spot on in their predictions. So I'm feeling good about this. This is this is so lopsided of a poll that even if it is skewed by a few points, it really wouldn't matter at this point. I would uh, listen. Uh, I would. Nobody knows anything until on election day. You can go in with the highest of hopes, but the bottom line is you got to come out. You got to vote. Uh, you know, we urge everybody to do it. But in the end, yes, you have to get into that voting booth. And, yes. Uh, and be able to do the damn thing for sure and pull that lever for who you uh, who you want <laughs> to uh, be the next president. But I would say this. You go on social media. It's a cesspool. It's a minefield, if you would, of trying to just figure out what's real, what's not real. I mean, just look at the last 72 hours regarding Joe Biden and just the madness and chaos that's going on right now over there. But Vegas always does know. And what I, you know, especially in less, in, since the last presidential election, I've really kind of had been looking more into this. I know Clay does as well, where look at the betting markets, because obviously, you know, that's people that are putting their money where their mouth is. But also they seem to know a lot more than a lot of pollsters do, because time and time again, how many times do we wake up on a Wednesday morning after Election Tuesday and we're like, oh, Shocker, the pollsters got it wrong again. So I don't really have too much faith in the pollsters. But I do know as somebody who uh, partakes in uh, some betting from time to time that uh, Vegas seems to know. And just being able to see the market move on various political, um, you know, political betting options and being able to follow it. Uh, they seem to always know something that we don't know. So um, I don't expect, you know, Trump to go in there with a 60 something person. I, I assumed it to get tighter if you would. Uh, but maybe that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Maybe that kind of uh, like that fire. Keep it going. Kick the tires. Let the fires. Let's go. Well, something that I think is important to pay attention to, because we talk about when it comes, it's election day is all that really matters, right? You could be up 100% to 0%, but if your voters don't, don't turn out to vote and do their jobs, it doesn't really matter. But what's important, I think, and the reason why I implore someone like LeBron James to make it clear, I mean, if he is going to vote for Donald Trump, which guns, I don't know. First of all, I don't even know if LeBron James votes. He could, he might not even vote in general. But if he does, I would have to imagine that he would vote Republican solely for from an economic perspective. Right. I mean, just for him making so much money, he's got to be fiscally conservative. Right. Um, so that alone might be enough of a reason for him to vote Republican. But if he is going to vote Republican for any reason, I think it's important because he does have so much influence, just like. Dave Portnoy has a ton of influence. And now Dave is not a political guy, right? He started Bar Barstool Sports. Um, he was very much just here to talk about sports and keep it, keep it moving. But right now he just sees so much wrong in our country. He sees so much wrong specifically with the Democratic Party because he sees them as a major threat to democracy that now he's been using his platform these past couple of days to really share and air his thoughts as far as what's going on. And he is completely not holding back, which I totally respect. Let's check out what he recently posted on his social media. It's the lowest point for democracy in my lifetime. Just say you hate fucking so much, you're willing to do whatever it takes to beat Trump and it doesn't matter what rights you steal, stomp on, 
or whatever you're willing to do. If you say that, at least I'll have an ounce of respect. But this democracy is saved when you've absolutely done the worst thing for democracy. It's like we're a third world country now, the way this thing's being run. Just say that, and at least I can have an ounce of respect. And for all the people who are being, Dave, you're dangerous. Dave, shut up. Dave, what are you talking about? Stick to pizza, stick to boards. You know not what one pe person who has sent me a message or tried to explain, you know not what one of them has done? Explained how I'm wrong about any of it. They're just like, shut up, shut up, shut up. If one person can explain how anything I've said is wrong, I'll fucking buy you a fucking boat and be your captain. <laughs> I like how we beeped out one F bomb at the beginning, but then like we just let the rest fly. Uh, it's all good. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Um, he's got an absolute point though, right? This has nothing to do with, oh, I just feel like I identify, well, not for a lot of people, right? We know that there's these far left radicals out there who will, you know, especially Kamala Harris, who is even more radical of a, a viewpoint, I, I believe probably than Joe Biden, judging by her time, um, you know, earlier in politics, uh, the policies that she was passing. But I think that there are a lot of people who just hate Donald Trump to the point where they'll vote for anybody besides him. And Dave is actually absolutely right. Like, if that's your standpoint, just come right out and say it. Uh, but this is a very low point for democracy. And I love that he's coming out so fiery because people pay attention to the, to, to his, what he says. A lot of people, just because he says this, will now start doing their own research and now be like, you know what? He's right. And maybe this will then in turn influence a, a large chunk of the younger population to go in a direction that they may not have otherwise. So I think this is great that Dave is using his platform to really talk about what's important to him and what's truthful. Yeah, whether it's a Dave Portnoy, whether it's a, it's a Clay Travis, you know, it's, you know, it, it, we, no, but the difference between Clay, the difference between Clay and and and, and Dave though, is Clay is a political right. guy, right? Like people right. understand that Clay is going to talk politics. Dave is not in politics. He is generally the furthest thing from it, right? He doesn't want to exactly, get involved, yeah, I mean, but I mean, now, Dave, right yeah. now, he doesn't see any other option. Right. No, I I, I understand. My, my my point was that. Need the, the, you know, they're fearsome. You know what I mean? Like they're straight shooters. And I think that's why people do listen to a Dave or to a Clay, because what you see is kind of what you get. Yes, of course, Clay is much more involved with the political scene. Obviously, we know that. But Dave's going to call out people. For, I mean, I've known Dave for like 10 years now. So like and, and follow Barstool and all that kind of stuff. So it's like they uh, he's going to say what you get. And I think that resonates with people because, you know, you would hope that people would stand by and be like, you know what? He is kind of right. Um, what we're seeing now, though, just from a, a kind of a larger aspect is you're starting to see people um, and, and Democrats kind of just there. The party is a little bit in inner turmoil right now, because I know plenty of Democrats that are think this whole thing is almost a sham because it's like, wait, Kamala is all of a sudden going to be the nominee. Like, what's happening here? Like, we didn't really get a say on that at all because they kind of just bypassed the whole entire process. Uh, you know, it, it, it was like some sort of like ulterior motives or just something there. It's like, why didn't you know this three months ago that Biden or why didn't they put why didn't Barack Obama come out three months ago and be like, hey, Joe, you should probably step down. Why didn't that gutless Chuck? Well, Schmuck I think they did know this. But, but yeah, but but they didn't say the quiet part out loud, and they should have because now you have Democrats that are not happy about Kamala Harris whatsoever here, and they did it to themselves. And if they think like a uh, they think a Newsom or somebody's going to come and try and rescue them right now, I don't think he wants any part of this whatsoever. I think he's going to try and be the the knight in shining armor, or whatever he wants to call himself, in four years from now. Uh, you know, I, if Trump wins, but. I think what we're seeing here is you're going to start <laughs> for all those people that ripped the other side of the political aisle, for all the leftists and the liberals and, and, the, and, and the Democrats that ripped the Republicans. They're going to start coming out and it's going to be revisionist history where it's like, oh, I, you know, I never said anything like that. It's like, wait, you did, though, for years. And now you're just coming across and believing something that we've been saying for a while now that, hey, Biden wasn't right. Or, hey, this party's kind of in shambles. Or, hey, when you look at different topics, 
uh, you know, that matter, whether it is the economy, whether it is illegal immigration, whether it is, you know, giving them more of our rights. Hey, you know, suddenly when it affects you, you care now. Well, where were you the last couple of years? So I think that we are going to see more of that where people are going to try and hide their past takes that they've done. Or they're just going to try and double down and become more crazy, <laughs> which we're also seeing, too. <laughs> Because there, this, please, this is, dear Jesus, yeah, we, the last thing we need is the crazy. already crazy people to become even more crazy. Uh, I, you know what? Did you hear? And I actually really like it made me like uh, it made me sad. Did you hear Elon Musk talking about how he lost his son to the woke mind virus? Um, like he was basically tricked by doctors. This is uh, like he just went on X yesterday and was it was just um, a clip that he it was a part of an interview his he has a a son that's trans so he like just talked about how he lost his child to the woke mind virus and he basically was tricked by doctors uh like during covid times when everything was crazy as it was and you know you just you just feel for people like this and i feel like now i don't know if that's the reason he bought x is to try and kind of start to destroy this woke mind virus but it really just makes you realize how many like how far a certain category of people can go. I mean, we have like far left radicals, right? And I think that a lot of people who used to identify as Democrat, they're not completely on that end of the spectrum, right? So it's like almost feels like the Republican Party is now the new moderate party of 2024 because the left have just gotten so far off the deep end. I I mean, I know transgender, like I... I would have to push back a little bit. Like, I don't know if it's a, I know Republicans that are transgenders. I know conservatives that are transgenders. I know both sides. So I don't really, yeah. I mean, Elon clearly is doing something within his own family there. And, and, and you know, he, I think he was talking more so about the, the doctor aspect or the parental rights aspect that he's talking about, especially when it comes to schools. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's one thing. If no, it's, like, it's just uh, yeah. what I'm saying. What I'm saying, though, is just that we have gotten, you know, so the the the, the Democratic Party, there's like not, you know, not all, of course, this is not a overall umbrella general statement, but there are subsects that go so far that it's hard for even sometimes I feel like now some Democrats to identify with the Democratic Party because they right, don't no, yeah i mean look at you I familiarize think another, themselves another example would be kind like of like there's the, been the, a major like, shift in the political spectrum yeah the, the like they uh, what's it say? this isn't your dad this isn't your parents democratic party uh needless to say you know what i mean that the uh, that the the you know the political spectrum if you would has shifted so dramatic and you know you can also bring up kind of like the far, like the uh, you know the far left the climate change aspect of it as well, and we've seen that kind of thing where it is where more climate people change. <laughs> where you know, where it's more people have shifted. I truly think, especially in the last year or two, towards the right just because of how perhaps far left the Democrat Party has gone because of uh, you know certain topics or whatever it might be. Um, I think yeah, and I think and I think that this election is going to show that much more than in, than well, in the past because the way that they've handled this um, has not been well. I'd like, they're almost, you know, when like, it's like the Bernie Sanders supporters, okay? You had that, you had a lot of Bernie, not a lot, but there was a good amount of Bernie Sanders supporters that, you know, weren't, did, A, didn't come out to vote in the past because their candidate didn't get there or they felt that they weren't being represented. Well, you felt that way with Bernie Sanders, who was able to at least get out there in the last election or even the one before that and, you know, be able to rally and more like that. Well, now that didn't even happen here because it just is Kamala, almost like a dictatorship. It's like, and here you go. Here's your cake. And here you go. Chicago, have a great time for the uh, for the uh, convention. That's what's happening. I think you're going to get a lot of disenfranchised voters that are from the Democratic Party that are a going to going to. Um, be like, what the hell happened to my party? You know what I mean? I think going back to like uh, to Portnoy or to Clay or something like that's all you want is just real. You should be able to see both sides or at least like not even both sides. How about just be real with yourself? Something we're just not even being real with ourselves. Take a step back and really think about what the hell is happening here or a topic 
and really do some research and really look into it. Um, and I think that this election is going to show that for sure. Well, I think we're already starting to see some cracks in the Democratic Party, uh, like you mentioned. And I think one of the most telltale signs is we see what's going on with Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle. Uh, she was oh. testifying yesterday and she couldn't answer a single oh freaking God. question. And now you and let, we're going to take a look at that video. But point is is now you have Republicans obviously calling for her to resign immediately, as they have been for days now. And even AOC, far left <laughs> policymaker, also insisting that Kimberly Cheadle resign. If this doesn't say something, I don't know what does. But let's take a look at Kim Cheadle yesterday when she was uh, attempting to dodge every single question that was pointed her way. Let's watch. What a would you agree that this is the most serious security lapse since President Reagan was shot in 1981 of the Secret Service? Yes, sir, I would. And, you know, do you know what Stuart Knight did when he was in charge at the time of the Secret Service? Do you know what he did afterwards? He remained on duty. He resigned. He resigned. And Stuart Knight was not a Democratic appointee or a Republican appointee. Look. Wait, she's so stupid. She goes, he remained on duty. No, he resigned. Literally the opposite of what you just said. Now, that was a clip of her obviously not aware of history, the history of her position and what's needed for her at this point in time. But she wouldn't answer a single question. The investigation is still ongoing. We're, we're still checking it out. People were like, are you dumb? Are you quite possibly the worst person to ever hold your position in history? The answer to that is yes. Guns. Definite yes. Uh, she you know, is a disgrace to the entire Secret Service. Uh, for any you know former agents that have retired, you know that they are furious with her. She's supposed to represent this. She doesn't have a, uh, an ounce of integrity. Uh, this is the first time that an assassination attempt has been on a president in 40 freaking years, and she still has a job. She, 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 the fact that she can look and brush, I don't know if she even brushes her teeth. She looks like she doesn't. Probably her, her mouth reeks, probably. Uh, so, you know, she, like the fact that she can look at herself in the mirror is a disgrace that that happened because um, it, it, I, I, you saw both sides, as you mentioned, AOC. I was like, what are we doing here? Because this, this is something the whole country should come together on. I don't care if it was Obama, Bill Clinton, Hillary, whoever the hell it was, Biden, whatever, Trump, George W., whatever it might be. When you have, you have to be an American in the bottom line. And when your former president or, or current president gets shot at, you think the whole country could re, uh, unite against that. And it did for about, well, not, I'd say a good amount did for about 48 hours. And now they're starting to fall back and, and hate Trump again. But from a sheer standpoint of blowing it, Cheeto is a disgrace. And what's, what's I mean, the, yeah, when you have a 20 year old gunman, we don't, we don't know where Biden is. And we, we do know one thing he doesn't fire people, as we've seen time and time again. But I don't know if he can even fire because I don't even know the hell he is. But having said that, you are a disgrace. It's like sometimes, uh, you know, the mayor of New York City might go to a cop's um, go to a cop's funeral and they might turn, um, you know, their back on him because of like it was his policies that may have led to the cop's death or whatnot. Or if they were an illegal immigrant or whatever yeah. it might have been. It's the policies that did that. I would love somehow for Cheeto to step out and the Secret Service just to turn their back on her. Really send her a message and be like, you are a disgrace to allow this to happen or do not have the integrity to stand up and resign. The hell are you waiting for, lady? Yeah. You, she didn't have any, it's been weak. Like, you basic answers we weren't able to get yesterday. It is, and that's when people start bringing up the conspiracies. Yeah, or, it's been 10 days now. So, um, yeah, yesterday when she was testifying, it had been nine days. And she she said the, the term nine, it's, it's, it's been nine days. It. It's like, yes, it's been nine days. You should have a lot it's more answers uh, th than questions at this point. And clearly we don't have those. And who knows if we're going to get those answers. But guns, as always, thank you, my Fired friend. Up. Always good to see you. <laughs> Fire it up. Um, there maybe you go. we'll Take, see Biden. I'm, hey, I'm glad we could. 
Maybe we'll see Biden today. I'll go check what the Vegas line is on that. If Biden's going to show his face or if he's going to do another. There you uh, go. Phone call somewhere. There we'll you see. go. Another another uh, phone call or recording. Yeah, we'll find out. Um, OK, guns. Thank you so much. Outkick.com. Check it out. <laughs> the, the guy loves to talk. He just loves it. He, he just he's got to get his extra couple of words in before he shoots off the air. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for being here. This has been another fun show in the books. Uh, hopefully, again, we're, we're looking for some answers. We've got a lot of questions. Uh, we'll see how all that develops throughout the course of this Tuesday. Um, until then, you know where to find me at Charlie on TV and you know where to find me tomorrow. Right back here. Same time, same place. See you then. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. As you know, the woke sports media is in shambles and OutKick is on top. So make sure you're tuning into my show, OutKick the Morning, for your fill of sports, pop culture, politics, and everything in between. For more original content, make sure you're clicking here. And also make sure you're subscribing by clicking here. Everybody, thanks for watching. Catch more later.